And welcome back here as we are continuing for, uh, you know, for the CCL, uh, sorry, start tournament. Um, Got mixed up with the words there. And we see Brandon, as we do see the teams are up actually, as we, and we know Concordia is up 4-2-1 as we go into this round six here. As you see Priestley, you know, just so we have Priestley, Sauce, and Brandon actually just on this side, go in your garage. We see is that number seven player that is, aka Lavelle, not gonna be able to catch him off flank. You know, get some pretty bad timing there. As you know, we see all four players from the St. Clair Saints near this B bomb site. Yeah, it's gonna be really interesting to see how this one plays out. You know, we got the sides flip here, so I'm sorry if we get a little bit of the callouts wrong for you guys. But needless to say, you're gonna actually see the Concordia boys over in green right now this time as a little side flip. But needless to say, now some picks going down 3v3 from each side, and you don't got me. Man with the bomb in hand. Let's see what he can do to get this over and plant it on A. So we see that bomb is going down right now. We see Brandon this map. Does he see Meathead? Knows that bomb is down. This is perfect timing for Brandon as he is able to get one. Brandon able to get two right here. As we see now a 3v1 situation for St. Clair. And Brandon's just going to hop this bomb, try and hop it. That's a smart play. There we go. Sauce he's, able he's to get it. that last pick. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, I really like that play from Brandon there. He got a nice little two picks there. Really blew open the round for the boys over at St. Clair. And now a, what is that now, 4-2? Yeah, 4-2. Now in favor still of Concordia. But, uh... We uh, we should be underway here soon. I believe, yeah, we are starting still 4-1, right? I am correct on yeah. that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 4-2 now in favor of Concordia. And uh, the boys over St. Clair, they're looking a little bit more comfortable on Miami now. It, it, they're just in a really, really tough spot considering they've lost four in a row to start it off. Let's just see if they can answer right back and find four of their own. Yes, and uh, I mean, that round could have went really dangerous here. We saw Lavelle. Rotating through their spawn and not finding a single thing because of the timing that he got, which was unfortunate. But now we're going to do a little A-hit ourselves as we see Siri all the way back there for the side of Concordia. Is he able to spot them as I think he might have as we see? Actually, no, he has not. That number three, actually, I think he has because that number three is rotating as that number two is going. And Sauce going to just get this fast plant down. So you see you that know number seven, a.k.a. Lavelle. Could you know, Nathan, watching. I'm really surprised to see that we don't see snipers, really. On Miami, I mean, almost every time I cast Miami, I re typically see a sniper being played and watching over the A site, or at least playing a long angle on B. And, and I'm really interested to see how, like, you know, well, I'm, I've already saw it, but how these teams can continue to go off without the snipers. But now a 3v3, and the bomb is planted for St. Clair. So St. Clair had a huge upper hand here, and Priestley just gets COD timing there on a cruisy. Now, Cruzy, is there going to be on the bomb and defusing? Going to be down to Brandon, but Brandon going to be challenged from a bunch of players. And will he find that player on the bomb? He's going to get the tags. And nonetheless, another good round for St. Clair. Yeah, Nathan, yeah, how do you so, that one? Actually, snipers are actually GA. Oh, they're so, GA, I forgot. Yeah. yeah, so they are called, if you're new, they're called Gentlemen's Agreement that both teams from each side do not use them. Only because um, they found out that smokes in this game have a one-way smoke glitch where if you're the person throwing it, you can see a little bit further in the smoke as that other player, the enemy player, won't be able to see you through it. Yeah, so um, smokes and snipers are both GA'd, correct? Yes, correct. So the reason why snipers mainly got GA'd because of one-way smoke, you know, it's so easy for a sniper to hold a lane without someone throwing the smoke, right? Exactly. And it, it makes complete sense. And I, and I do figure that Cold War will add a little bit of a patch in there eventually to fix that. You know, the pro players do have a lot of sway and say on what gets done in the community. You know, that is one of their big money makers. It is one of their big revenue streams. And, you know, pro players, there is, it is really interesting to see a, a competitive play without snipers, right? They're a big part of Search and Destroy. And I believe that we will see that, you know, fixed throughout as COD goes on. It is still pretty early in the competitive scene. Like, CDL regular season hasn't even started yet. Uh, you know, College League is just getting underway now, as you can tell. But nonetheless, St. Clair already on the upper hand now here. Yeah, three. Sorry for cutting you off there. As we see this number two player, though, this number two player could be coming in clutch for Concordia. This number two able to get one, and Priest backs off at the best timing he can. Able to get picked, though. That is not good for the side of St. Clair, as we see now. A 2v3 for the side of the St. Clair Saints right here. 
and Baum is going down right now for Concordia. Brandon and Lavelle in a 2v3 situation. Brandon about to be in a gunfight right here. Siri, will he notice him? Brandon not going to be able to notice him. Lavelle in a 1v3, 30 seconds left. Not able to get it, and Concordia goes now to match point. Yeah, 5-3 five five to three three. game here. Yeah, 5-3. Really interesting, because, you know, that was a big, big round from St. Clair. I mean, I always emphasize it in COD uh, all the time. Search and Stray, of course. But uh, it, it really is a huge difference when, let's say, the matchup is 4-3, to three, right? You have one team who can... You really start pulling away if you win that round. 5-3, to three, it, it puts you at match point. You only need one where the other boys need three. However... If St. Clair were to win that round, turns it around to a 4-4 and completely flips the game on its head, right? So very crucial round there for both teams. Concordia going to be the team to take it, though, nonetheless. And now, just like that, St. Clair going to have to get three unanswered to win this map. Yeah, so it definitely is a crucial round because then you're fighting for match point when it goes to 4-4, as we see. Cruzy going to be able to get that first blood. As we see, Lavelle, that could be his last spawn in SND. Hopefully not right now, as we see Sauce coming through this garage. It's a 3v4. Knowing you done got me is there. Going to stun that. Now he knows 100% he is there. Sauce going to be trying to be able to get this pick. Not able to get it, as we see. I think that's pretty He doesn't want to get too aggro. They're, they, they, you know, you know, he's got a good upper hand there sitting in that corner. Priestley not wanting to get too aggro. Throw his life with the window, considering that Concordia is at match point. And just like that, 4v2 in favor for Concordia now. Really tough if you're from the side of St. Clair. It's going to be all up to Sauce and Priestley. Let's see if they can pull it off. Yep, and right now, I think they're trying... Oh, they were playing passive. Now we see Priestley just going to... thought he was going to bait for Sauce right there. Let Sauce get the kill. You know, Concordia is sitting in a comfortable position right now as St. Clair needs to get this bomb down. 14-10 seconds right now. Sauce trying to put this bomb down. Going to be putting it down. And I think someone is coming from Piano, and that will be a map win for Concordia. Yeah, 100%. Couldn't agree more. You know, like we said, 4-1 to game here off of that one. And it is really just tough for the boys that are St. Clair. It's, it's hard to turn a map around when you start down 4-0, right? Like, you know best being a player, right? You get you start down 4-0, not only do you have a big disadvantage in the game, you also have a huge disadvantage in momentum alone, right? So momentum is so, so huge considering the fact that like you know what i mean like your heads are down at that point right yeah like, you know you got to win five six like well they can only win one round so it, it's so so tough for st Clair to have their backs up against the wall like that but now nonetheless one to one map count we will be moving on to control and i will say it and i will say it again i hate control in this playlist because it is so defensive sided so so defensive sided makes it so hard on the offensive side to actually push through get on these points while playing lives um you know but it's hard right like you usually see ctf dom or uplink and and you know control is just one of those ones it was a lot better in black ops 4 than it was rather than in this call of duty yeah so i completely agree with that um i know personally for me i like domination a lot better because i was yeah i normally trying to flip the flag which you know i could try i would love having that you know um challenge of flipping the flag but it's, as control it's now it's a team game as where if four players are to stack the point that point is going to go up so fast in to the point where the defense won't if they get all four down the defense won't even be able to spawn in quick enough for the offense to capture that point um and it's really i i've taught those boys that so i'm really hoping they uh use that and just stack the point um and yeah they might be able to come out with this game. It's going to be on Raid, actually. So that's the new map that's been added for anyone new. What What are your thoughts about this? I love Raid, man. I love seeing Raid. Just gives me some uh, throwback BO2 vibes. You love to see it. You know, you don't really see map remakes come into the competitive playlist too very often. So seeing that come through so far with Raids this season... I've just been loving them because, you know, Raid is also Control, Search and Destroy, and Hardboy. It can be played in every single game mode, which makes it so, so much more special. And all these players are, you know, very aware on what to do on Raid, whatever it may be. So what I really think you're going to see is whatever team is on offense, focus all their attention to one point, whether it be A or B, to at least get one of them out of the way, build more time, you know, get some of the, um, build more time, get some of the, you know lives built up and whatever you may do 
and just put yourself in a better position. Then you can focus all of your attention onto one point rather than splitting on the two, right? It, it just makes it a lot more harder. So I really do think we're going to see a lot of attention focused on one point and then flopped over to the other. Yeah, and I completely agree with you on that. That's what teams have been doing. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if people go into the mid-map lane and try and get some early <laughs> picks off that for their team. Um, as we know, it's so big to have not just mid control on this map, but you know, you're not so you're not getting picked. Uh, I know one for the one control point is raid. It is easy to pick off people from mid like that. And so, yeah, one thing I also want to touch on too is you see it in control a lot. No matter what map it is, not just raid exclusively, it is so so important to have the um what do you call it uh to push into their spawns and to get them stuck back there if you can get people pushing farther and farther and farther back in their spawn and just have like a line set up of these players stuck in their spawn and you can just continue to feed and feed and feed you know where they're going to come to spawns yeah. are blocked right so it's pretty much really hard for these teams to get out of these spawns once actually stuck in a position where you have players just firing on all cylinders. And St. Clair looked really good on the hard point side of things in the respawn before. So I, I really will think they will come out of this one hot and, you know, do good in the respawns once again. Yeah, and I completely agree with you on that, man. Um, One thing is, yeah, spawns do get locked. So it's pretty annoying if you... um you know, keep on getting spawn trap. But here we go. Raid control. We were starting off, you know, now everything's back. So St. Clair Saints, the side is good. And yeah, we're actually going to have three people challenge, all four challenge mid. That's going to be a first blood for Priestley. Let's see what the St. Clair Saints opt to do here. I like the four hit mid, right? It literally lets them get some map control open and they can play off picks. This way they aren't devoting all their resources to one side. You know, let's say like exactly what they did there. They clear... So now they can actually go and take A with less stress on the point while they also lead lives. So huge plays from the boys over St. Clair. You know, Concordia can answer back and find two there. But nonetheless, St. Clair still looking good as they almost have the two tick mark on A. Priestley, exactly what I touched on when I first stated this. You see him getting so deep into their spawns there to at least try to buy some pressure on a Concordia. And look at him, five streak right away. And that is so huge in control because lives matter so, so much in this that it, the, the streaks is so big. Yep, and we actually do see that B site also getting... I think now we have two ticks, almost a third tick onto... Uh, it's all up to Priestley there, but we do see progress at BU getting that one tick. And that was a really smart play by um, St. Clair, you know, able to slay out. We can definitely see that St. Clair is a hard point. Get two ticks. Like, this is this is ideal positioning for St. Clair. Like, they don't even really have to stress about lives too much now. Look at this. A tick and a half already on that B point. Yep. I'd be quite worried if you're Concordia. And you're going to see St. Clair just continue to keep pressure on it. They lead in lives. They, they have a minute 50 to get a tick. And that is so much time. I'd be quite worried if you're in Concordia. Yep. And as we saw them, they were stacking the points. You know, they stacked to A point off the start. They they stacked that B point once they knew they could get to A point, which is really smart of them. As a defense doesn't really have a chance, you know, they might have a chance right now, but St. Clair is only one take away in all four people. If they get on that That'll end. completely open up the site. Yep. And this, we're about to see it right now. It's just like, bad. oh my god, that's all four down. This is, should yep. be match. Or round, this sorry. Give me the round right here. As we see that point, look how fast it just went up right there. Well, I think that was not even 10 seconds. As a defense, when you go all four down like that, you can't even spawn in to, you know, defend that point. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more there, Nathan. And uh, needless to say here, Priestley with that five streak to open things up, absolutely huge place for St. Clair. And, you know, St. Clair, they would have took a little bit longer to establish more control over that A site if he didn't just completely pop off there like so. So huge place from him. 7-2 and two to start this one off and currently on a two streak with seven objective kills. I'd like to point out how crucial that is. Like, so many objective kills. Like, it's not like he's just running around getting useless kills. Well, honestly, yeah. in control, there's no such thing as useless kills because lives matter so, so much. But needless to say, his kills are so valuable. And just like that, he opens it up with two more, putting him on a four streak. He's just looking great right now. And as we see, that was a bit of a firing range there. We see three headshots go down, which is pretty rare. But now we see everyone just almost stacking on that A point from Concordia. Sauce able to get one. Sauce able to get two. Going to get picked, though. We see Dawson on this point. And as we, like we said, man, uh, stacking the point is just going to make that point go up so much faster. 
Yeah, I completely agree. Stacking the point, look how quick it goes. Like, if you get three, four people on there, like this Concordia just did, it yeah, almost gives St. Clair a no shot of really getting that. And now, just like that, even St. Clair was in this exact position last time. They get those ticks down so, so fast. And then, and now look at they have two minutes to work with to get on this B point. But now that there's only one point remaining, it gives St. Clair all their attention to focus on B. So, Concordia, they're in kind of a tough spot here. At the one minute, 50 second mark on last time, you know, St. Clair already had two ticks on B. So, St. Clair had an upper hand on their offensive round. And I'm really finding it interesting to see how the offense just continues to slay out in this one. The offensive teams are looking so, so good, uh, whether that be Concordia or St. Clair. Whenever, whatever team is on offense at the current time, they are doing better than most teams will on offense, just considering how they're playing right now. Sauce playing a little bit of ring around the Rosie there, but that player will get cleaned up nonetheless. Now a 16 to 15 live advantage for St. Clair, and Priestley is chasing down a kill. And Priestley able to get him, as we see. St. Clair able to, you know, protect this point a little more than Concordia. Priestley in a not great spot. Yep, not able to, you know, protect this point. Uh, or is go for this point, sorry, it's Concordia. Yeah, they're really stuck in their spawn. We see, you know, two go down. This could be the opening for it, but, uh, Sauce, not able to get one here, able to get one, you know, able to play his life. They're just so good at doing that, you know, to protect this point. So we see, even though Sauce goes down, we have Priest in, you know, I think it was Lavelle back. Yeah, so hard for Concordia to get control of this. As you know, they have to wait. Not, you see those two players there. They have to wait for what uh, the other opponent, the other teammates, for to get mid control. But Sauce is going to say, "Nope, you're not getting mid control. I'm going to shut you down now." So it, it makes it time. Time is ticking by the second, right? So you only have half a minute left. They had two minutes to work with this. There's a minute and a half has already gone down as Saint Clair continues to put pressure on this B point. They continue to lead in lives. Lavelle coming behind him. Lavelle going to be the man to watch here as he comes through and just tries to do everything he can to shut them down. He should be able to find a good amount of fix. Oh my God, there's one, there's two, whatever it may be. That point is completely cleared out now. No time to work with. St. Clair going to take that down back to the one tick mark. 20 seconds and Concordia realistically has one more push left and Sauce is going to be the man to and watch mid and shut it down again. That could have been a field day for Priestley and Sauce right there. But now Concordia, 13 seconds right there. As we saw, Dawson made the play right there. And, uh, you know, at this point, Brandon able to get one. No response for Concordia. Oh, oh pulls, out the, pulls out the pistol. Oh, you love to see that Daimati come out. It's such a, such a good gun. Yes, as the other pistols, I just want to say for everyone else, they are GA'd. Um, gentlemen's agreement. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff GA and GA's change so frequently, so we don't expect anybody in the viewers to be like updated on GA's or whatever, you know. Uh no one's in here, like uh, no one's watching competitive COD 24 hours a day, whatever it may be, right? Following these pro GA's because every COD, every year, you know, Nate, you probably know best, GA's change on the fly. So yes, whatever patches so come out, whatever it means, like whatever the pro players feel like they need, they were will have the main say in that. And you know, most top AMs and most collegiate will follow the standard pro GAs. So St. Clair looking good. That was a very, very good to win that defensive round there. If they can just do exactly what they did to open things up, take mid map control. Priestley gonna be the man to answer for that. Continuously going off 18 and 7, Priestley is having a field day. Yeah, and they're actually going to capture, go for B here, opt out, looking like they're going to split. Um, as we see, A is just wide open. We see that number three and number seven going to be into gunfights. So we see, actually, Brandon Concordia is going off. <laughs> yeah, Concordia is actually spawning, and Brandon gets oh another. Oh my god, Brandon, it's a, he, oh, if he finds this one, Brandon, I'm, okay. Oh, he gets stuck yeah. on that fan. Look at where Concordia is spawning. They're spawning near that A zone, and this B is just getting ticked up, as we see. Someone goes through money, but that call out is just right there for Priest. And B is, B is almost harder to hold than A, right? Like B is harder to capture than A, sorry. It's yeah. much easier to hold on the defensive side. So if to have them capture it right away, two minutes on the clock, and they have two ticks on. Oh, never mind. Concordia just hopped on there before they got the second tick. But Priestley, so pushed up in their spawn, able to try to do a little bit of damage there. He will find one. Will he get this trade? Oh, he gets a punch on him, but unable to pick him up. And who's on the five streak? Oh, that was Priestley on the five streak before he fell. Yeah. But nonetheless, he's 22 and eight now, 19 objective. That's one thing. That's a yeah. stat I want to highlight. The closest that's person in the lobby, up. the closest person in the lobby is at 10. And Brandon is continuing to pick it up now. You know, yeah, I came off to a little bit of a slow start, but if you see him, he is just working this A point. Yep. I 100% agree with you there. 
And th this is going to be the game right here. The St. Clair Saints able to win against Concordia in a two to one fashion in a best of three. Moving on to the next round. Now it'll be hard. Pointed. Let's see it. Yeah, and, and so, so crucial for St. Clair, you know, win that control. You don't want to let Concordia, you know, take this one up 2-1. And then, uh, you know, win, let's, let's say, because I, I believe St. Clair heavily favored on the hard point, considering on how they played that first one, or just heavily favored in the respawns in general. So yeah. for them to take that control really gives them an upper hand. Control is usually a decider. If you have two, one team, SND team, SND stars, really good at SND, right? But then you on the other side of things, you have a good team at respawns. Control is usually the decider between those two because control is kind of a mix of both, right? You're playing on your lives, but it's also a pretty big respawn. So it's a little bit of a different mix between it. So for St. Clair to win that control, so, so huge. And for them to have such an upper hand moving into this hard point, they really should have no problems and should clean this up this map. Well, actually, so that one was a best of three. Uh, oh, that's that only best of three. Yeah, oh, so that oh. was the best of three. So now we're moving on. If we can get that bracket up, let's see who we can see. Okay, who so we it, are goes, going it goes best of five in round five. So, okay, so all of today will be best of three. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm pretty sure. Which, you know, that, that that's why that map was pretty crucial. St. Oh. Clair guys turned it up right there. It's all good. I well, really thought the best of five. Reversing next. Yeah, so, yeah. Sorry, I'll let what, you go on, Nate. So what were I, I was about to just say? So what were your thoughts about that game? Uh, Saint Clair played it good. You know, the big thing here is the respawns. And now that I found out that the first day is just best of three, I thought this whole time was best of fives. But for Saint Clair to be in best of threes now, so so crucial. Because look at that, they're looking good in control. It, it, you agreed with me, or Nate? Right? Like they they look yeah, good on that. They look solid. exactly, and same on hard point. All they have to do is get those rotations a little bit more on lock. Because their slang power is going to work for now, but it's eventually going to slow down and they won't be able to, you know, do as much in the slang department as they face better and better teams as this goes on. So nonetheless, St. Clair looking amazing in the response, search and destroy. You need to see a little bit more teamwork, them working together, making plays. But honestly, at the same time, I really do feel like Miami just it wasn't St. Clair's map. And when that map changes going into this next round, I, I really do believe that things will turn around. And one thing I also want to point out is that Waterloo Gold did beat Toronto two to one. So that was also a two to one series, no two to zero. Oh. So we're gonna have a good series coming up here next between Waterloo Gold and Saints Gaming. Yep, and as we do see our club team beating V or yeah VCU COD two to zero. Oh. If, and if they win that one, we win this one. We will be versing each other, which you know it would be pretty funny to see each other. But yeah, we're going to go against Waterloo Gold. I think we are just going to be waiting for maps also. Um the veto so yeah 100 percent. we'll be waiting on these maps and one thing that is so huge in the best of threes is being good at respawn st Clair has that i i pointed it out as i was talking before and st Clair just to continue to keep this one up they should be a okay and like you said st Clair to win their first match 2-0 I'm really interested to see what they can do against Rucker Scarlet. One thing that worries me, Rucker Scarlet is good. Like they, they are a pretty decent school and all esport titles. So I'm, I'm really excited to see how they do here against the club team for St. Clair. But the club team is even still a strong roster, right? So yeah. they, they shouldn't have any problems. Um, It's going to be a close one nonetheless. But needless to say, Saints Gaming versus Waterloo Gold coming up here next. Stay with us as we're going to cut to a quick break. My name is The Prive or Jackson, and I'm alongside Nate or Corius.